Okay, my people, let's do this. Uh, this is going to be the answers to the mock uh, Algebra 1 test uh, you guys took in class a few days ago. And uh, here are the instructions, and here is question 1. Uh, simple. If you have a coordinate where x is negative and y is negative, what quadrant does this lie in? Well, that is going to have to be the third quadrant. That's where both x and y are both negative. All right, in this case, um, the next one here, In what is the coordinate which lies on the y-axis and is across from 4, negative 6. So if I go to a new page in here, where is 4, negative 6? 4, negative 6 is located where? 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now I want to know what is the point that's along the y-axis, which is across from this red point in here. Well, that's going to be this point in here. And what is the coordinate of that point right there? The answer is going to be 0, comma, negative 6. So if that's 4, negative 6, the one that's across from it is going to have the same exact y value. And if it's on the x-axis, the x-coordinate is going to be 0. So the answer is 0, negative 6. The next question here is finding intercepts. Number 3, we want to find the x and y intercepts of this equation here. So I'm going to make a little table on here. And this is how I find the x and y intercepts. The assumption I know for x intercepts is the y coordinate has to be 0. The y intercepts, the assumption I have to make is x is going to be 0. So using those assumptions, I can write our two equations, excuse me, the r equation on both sides here because there's going to be two coordinates we're going to be finding. And I am going to take this fact, what I know, and plug it in to the y coordinate. And I'm going to take this fact of what I know about x's, and I'm going to plug it in right there. What that essentially does is it makes this 0, and it makes that 0. So in this case, x turns out to be 6 here, which makes the answer 6, 0. That is the x-intercept. And over here, when we solve for y, y turns out to be negative 8. And that means the y coordinate is 0, negative 8. And if you graph these two points, 6, 0 would be somewhere over here. Uh, 0, negative 8 would be somewhere down there. That would be the rough, rough sketch of, of uh, using intercepts to, um, to graph a line. So we just calculated the two intercepts, and the next problem here is we're going to find the slope of that particular line. Well, one way to find the slope would be to use it visually and try to count using those two coordinates right there. Another way is to put it in this format, which is the technique I'm going to use. That's called the slope-intercept format. So I'm going to rearrange our equation 4x minus 3y equals 24. And I'm going to try to isolate the y variable. When I do that, I get 3y equals negative 4x plus 24. I divide both sides by negative 3. And let's see, what do I get? I get positive 4 thirds x and minus 8. And again, the question is asking me, what's the slope? Well, since the m value is the slope, and I just put it in that format, the answer to this problem is 4 thirds. That's the slope of that line. All right, number 5 in here is we want to build a table using this equation right here. And so we have given you uh, four x coordinates we're, we're going to plug in uh, to the x coordinate. And then uh, the last problem, I'm going to take the y coordinate, which is 6, and plug it in to find the other corresponding uh, x coordinate. So let's do it one at a time. So there's like five little baby problems in here. And so the first one is we're going to plug in 0 in for x. So there's a lot of plugging here and then solving. So this turns out to be 0, so y here turns out to be negative 6. That's the answer to the first one. The next one, I'm going to do the same thing, but instead of plugging in 0, we're going to plug in negative 4. So when I plug in negative 4 here, this is 4 times negative 4 plus 2y equals a negative 12. And so this is going to be negative 16 plus 2y equals negative 12. And I put the 16 on the other side, that becomes a positive 16, that equals 4, so y equals 2. Again, I'm using some uh, solving skills here, I'm using some arithmetic, adding and subtracting, 
numbers from both sides, dividing uh, two by both sides and so forth to solve and isolate y. This girl has to be like breathing to you as you move through every math course on how to solve. The next one in here, it's four times the value of, excuse me, four times five plus two times y equals negative 12. Well, that's a 20, and the 20 is going to become a negative 20 on the other side. So when it's a negative 20 on the other side, it's going to be a negative 32. So y here turns out to be negative 16. All right, the next one is going to be when I plug in a negative 7. Again, also, watch out when you add and subtract positive and negative numbers here. Your signs have to be absolutely flawless. So this equals a negative 28. But when you move a negative 28 on the other side, it becomes a positive 28. So when you combine those two numbers together, that's a positive 16. So it looks like y here equals 8. And the last one, notice it's a little backwards. I'm not going to be plugging in a value for x. I'm going to be plugging in a value for y. So this is 4x plus 2 times the value of y, which is 6, equals negative 12. So this is going to be 4x plus 12 equals negative 12. When you bring this 12 on the other side, it becomes a negative 12. So that's going to be a total of a negative 24. So all together here, we got a negative 6. So this is the um, the table that we just filled in that said to do what? Complete the table. All right, the next step in here is finding the slope between A and B. Well, slope is just rise over run, so I'm going to try to count these coordinates in here. I'm going to go down how many? I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, and then I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I went down 3 all over 5. That's it. That's the slope of that particular line. This one, we're going to calculate the slope given two coordinates in here. And essentially, this says subtract the y's, subtract the x's. So I'm going to subtract the y's, and I'm going to subtract the x's. So this looks like it's going to be negative 12 all over a negative 3. What is that when you simplify it? Well, that turns into a positive 4. If you wrote 4 over 1, that's acceptable too. Either one of these we will take. The answer to that is slope is 4. Number eight, if you graphed line uh, containing these two points, what would be the y-intercept? Well, I have this little graph over here that is, um, well, I'm going to try to graph these and then try to figure out what would be the y-intercept. Well, one technique is to do this visually, so which that's the technique that I'm going to use first. So negative 5, negative 9. Where's that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's negative 5. And then I'm going to go down a little bit. And so it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's a starting point right there. I got that one. The other one's going to be negative 2, 3. Negative 2, 3 is located right there. I got that one. So if I start trying to use a ruler or something to kind of connect these lines, well, this is just a segment connecting these two. But I can see there's a little bit of a pattern in here. So if I go up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. If I go up 12 and over 3, that's a slope of 4, meaning up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1. Up 4, 2, 3, 4, over 1. Up 4, over 1. Well, I can keep on continuing with this pattern. Up 4, over 1, and up 4... 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1. And this is the point that we're really interested in because the question asks, what would the y-intercept be? Well, now I just have to count. I'm going to go up 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. This is 0, comma 11. And that's the answer to this problem. That is the y-intercept of those two points. So that was just one way to solve for it. I did it a very visual way by graphing and then calculating the slope, and then just kind of extending the line out. Let's go back to our test in here. Uh, number 9. What does test number 9 look like? All right, in uh, slope-intercept form, write the equation of the line that passes through these two points. Well, to write the equation in slope-intercept form, I need two things. I need the slope, and I need the y-intercept. So we just did a problem two problems ago where we calculated the slope. Let's do that. 
negative 9 minus 3, negative 5 minus a negative 2. Oh my god, those are the same exact points. So that was negative 12 over negative 3. That slope was 4. So I know half my answer. Half my answer is y equals 4x, and I don't know my b value. Well, the b value was just the same exact b value we did visually in the previous problem. It turned out to be 11. This is the other way how to calculate that is I can now take any one of these two points. I'm going to choose B, and I'm going to plug it into this equation. This fact, what I know about this equation so far, where I know the slope, and I just know an x and y coordinate that's on our, on, on our line. And when I solve for B here, if you notice, B turns out to be 11. Well, that's exactly what we saw a minute ago. So and when we graphed it, so in this case, what is the final answer? y equals 4x plus 11. This is an equation. That's what we have to do. Write an equation in this format, slope intercept form. So on the side, don't tell me m is 4 and the b is 11. No, that's not an equation. This over here in blue, that's the equation. That's what we're looking for. All right, number 10. It says write in slope intercept form the equation of the line passing through those two points. Well, this is the same um, um, same scale here. I want to find the slope first because, again, the ultimate goal is to write this equation knowing the slope and the b value. So I'm going to go 2 minus a negative 5. I'm subtracting the y's. And I'm going to go negative 4 minus 3. Well, this equals 7 all over negative 7. So the slope here is negative 1. So y equals negative 1x plus b. So what do I want to do next? Well, I want to take any one of these points. I'm going to use this one. And I'm going to plug it into here. Well, the y value is 2. And the x value is negative 4. So when I solve for b in here, this is positive 4. When I move it on the other side, it's a negative 4. So this turns out to be a negative 2. So my final answer is y equals negative x or negative 1x minus 2. All right, let's look at the next one. The next one is a graphing problem. So I'm going to take this graph right here, and I'm going to put it on a little page here all by itself. And I'm going to try to graph this. Well, this is already in a really nice format. Uh, this equation, it's already in slope-intercept form. So I am going to use my little graphing tool in here, and I'm going to go down 6. That's the first number we use. We use the y-intercept first. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the slope says go up 3, 1, 2, 3, over 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so I do technically only need two points to make a line, but I'm going to graph a third point in here, up 1, 2, 3, over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right there. I can even grab another point, 1, 2, 3, down 3, and backwards 5 to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right there. And so I did multiple points in here to kind of demonstrate that I can keep on doing this forever and ever if I wanted to. Take my little graphing tool, and now I have just graphed that equation right there. Notice we use that coordinate first, and then we use the slope to build the rest of our line. Let's go back to our test in here. So I want to do the next one, which is this graph right there. So I'm going to take this graph and put it on a new page, which is right here. And I'm going to graph this equation. Well, this equation, uh-oh, it's not in slope-intercept form. I really like it when it's in this form. So I'm going to do a little rearranging first. So I'm going to go x minus 2y equals negative 8. I'm going to bring the x on the other side. It becomes a negative x. And then I'm going to divide through by negative 2. When I divide through by negative 2, this turns into a positive 1 half x plus 4. So now I can take my little graphing tool in here. What number do I start with? I start with the positive 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's my y-intercept. My slope says go up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, and so forth. And I'm trying to be neat as possible, so when I connect all these line points in here, I can nice I can have a nice crisp line, and that's the graph of that equation right there. Let's do another one. Another one is going to look like what? That is going to be number 13. Well, 13 it is in a different form. 
13 is in what we call point slope form. Point slope form, just by looking at it, we can know two things. We can know a point, be very careful here, the point here, if you know the format of this uh, general uh, format of the equation of the point slope form, this is going to be negative 4 plus 6. That's the point. And the slope here is going to turn out to be negative 2. Well, in this case, when I graph, I don't need a y-intercept. I just need any point. Well, they told me a point, 4, negative 6. Was, excuse me, negative 4, 6. So I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That is the point that's on this line. And the slope is down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, and so forth. This, if you connected all those points, that would be the graph of all those points right there. That's the graph of the equation of the line. All right, that was number 13. Let's try number 14. 14 is another graphing problem. You have to be very comfortable with graphing. And notice this one is back to a really nice format. The format here is slope-intercept form. So slope-intercept form is a great form to have because just by looking at it, I know the y-intercept. That's the 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then the slope is going to be negative 1. Down 1 over 1. Down 1 over 1. Down 1 over 1. And so forth. Whoops. And I can connect all those points right there if I wanted to. And that goes on forever and ever and ever. And that's the graph of the equation of that particular line. Let's new number 15. 15 is what? 15 looks like... This equation right here. Again, another great equation. It's in slope in a sub form. I'm going to give myself uh, an own clean uh, page here to graph this. The number I'm interested in first is the, the, the intercept, the y-intercept. So when I do this, the y-intercept now is positive 3. Positive 3 is right there. And the slope of this line is down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1. Well, up 3 over 1. And again, once you get a, a little hang of it of how to graph these equations, they're really not that bad. All right, try to see which point we need first. That's our y-intercept. And then use the slope to build our line. So let's try number 16. 16 looks like what? 16 is, doesn't give us an equation. It says to write an equation. We could do that right here. Write the equation in slope in a sub form. Well, just like earlier, we only need two things to write an equation in a slope in a sub form. It doesn't tell us what form to write it in, but since I know the slope and since I know the y intercept, that's all I need to write an equation. So my final answer here is going to be y equals 4 sevenths, because that's the slope of the line, x. And then I'm going to subtract 1 because that's the y intercept right there. So it's kind of backwards of the previous one. They told us the information, and now we got to write the equation. So we didn't have to graph it. And so now, this is a little tricky. We have some two equations in here. These are This is not x equals 6 as a value for just you know a point. This is, These are not points. These are actually equations of lines. x equals 7 and x equals negative 4. And if we graph them... Um, <clears throat> at which point would they intersect? So I'll do that on a separate sheet of paper over here. And so if you look back in your notes, these are horizontal and vertical lines. So try to understand why the first one is going to be a vertical line at x equals 7. So if I go over 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, even though x-axis is over here, this turns out to be a vertical line because if you notice, every point along that line has an x value of 7. And then the other equation in here, this is going to be y equals negative 4. That means every point along this line right here has something in common. That's when their x 
their, their y values are negative 4. So this one is x equals 7. This line is y equals negative 4. And I want to find out where they intersect. Well, they didn't quite intersect when I first drew this line, but hopefully you can see that they intersect simply at 7, comma, negative 4, and that's the answer to number 17. Let's take a look at 18. 18 says what? Write the equation of any line which has zero slope. Well, hopefully you know that lines that have zero slope are horizontal lines, and we just covered that any line that looks like y equals some number. doesn't matter n number what it is. It could be y equals 8. That would be one acceptable answer. y equals negative 2. That's another acceptable answer. Any line that looks like y equals some number. That would be a horizontal line, and all horizontal lines have a slope of 0. 19 says what? Write the equation of a line which has no slope. Well, we just mentioned that no slope lines are vertical, and that's going to be x equals some number. But in this case, it has to go through the point 2, 5. So if I graphed where 2, 5 was, where's 2, 5? 2, 5 says go over 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right there, it's 2, 5. Well, the line that has no slope is going to look like that. Therefore, what's the equation of that line? Y equals, excuse me, x equals 2 is the equation of the line that has no slope that goes through 2, 5. So you kind of put together all the clues to all these problems in here. Again, write an equation of a line which has no slope that goes through that. 0.25 x equals 2. It's that simple. Number 20. In point slope form, point slope form looks like this. y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. And so, as long as we know the slope, that's going to be this one right here. And a point, that's going to be where we fill this in. So what's the answer to this one? Simple. This is going to be y minus 18, not positive 18, the opposite equals, that's what this means right here, opposite, equals the m value, and the m value is 5 in this case, times the quantity x, and then the opposite of the x value is positive 3. That's it. You could cut parentheses around these guys in here, but it, it's really, it's not making a difference. So, that's the equation of that particular line in slope, in point slope form. So be sensitive to these words in here, point slope versus slope intercept. The last few problems in here, we've got to determine whether two lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Well, before I begin, parallel lines, I'm going to have the same slope. So if that slope is 2, this slope better be 2. Therefore, those lines are going to be parallel. If I have slopes that are perpendicular, it turns out the slope of this line, let's say it's 4 fifths, the slope of the one that's perpendicular is going to be the negative reciprocal. It's going to be negative 5 fourths. And if it's neither, we're not going to have either one of these two relationships. So when I see the first one and I notice they both have the same exact slope in those two equations right there, I, we see that just by looking at it, those two lines are going to be parallel. By analyzing the slopes, we can tell whether things are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. 22. Well, in this case, this is 2 thirds. This is 3 over 2. That kind of feels like it's going to be perpendicular, but what's wrong? Well, in order to be perpendicular, we need negative reciprocals, not just reciprocals. You see, these are reciprocals right now of each other, but one of them would have to be positive, one of them would have to be negative in order for it to be perpendicular. So since they're not equal, since they're not negative reciprocals, it's neither here. These are neither parallel nor perpendicular. 23 in here is very tricky. Notice that's the equation of a line. That's the equation of a line. 7 is not the slopes of these lines. If you remember, yellow lines, the yellow line in this case, is a horizontal line y equals 7. And the blue line is a vertical line, 
at x equals 7. So if you have horizontal and vertical lines, guess what? You better realize that those are perpendicular. That's a little tricky problem in there. Those are perpendicular lines. The last one in here is uh, C and D. We want to see if C and D are parallel or perpendicular or neither. But the problem here is these are not in nice formats. These are in standard form. So I'm going to take each one of these equations and try to rearrange them so that we have a nice form such as y equals mx plus b so we can analyze our slopes. So in this case, I'm going to move the x over. It's negative x plus 6. The 6 is not really bothering me here right now. What I'm really analyzing is the slope of that line is negative 1. Over here, I'm going to keep the y's on that side for now and move the 3x over. It becomes a positive. Whoops, that's a negative 18. And then I'm going to divide everything through by a negative 3. So this is y equals negative x plus 6. Well, in this case, notice their slope is negative 1. So if this guy has a slope of negative 1 and that side, that, that, that equation has a slope of negative, negative 1, these two lines are, <coughs> are parallel. Let's talk about 25. Explain in words what you notice when you graph these two equations on the same graph. So what would you notice if you graph these? Well, not only are they parallel, they are the same exact line. Look, they're the same exact line. And so that's what we're looking for here. We're looking for someone to notice that, look, these are the same exact line. They're on top of each other. It's like graphing one line and another line. So they're on top of each other. Okay? So that's what we're looking for. Some sort of verbal description that it was the same exact line. Not two separate lines that never touched. These ones are always touching. So we have a couple bonuses in here. Um, a line contains the point 2, 6, and x, 15. And we know the slope. So if you use the slope formula here, we know the slope has to be 3. And if I start subtracting the y values, I'm going to go 15 minus 6. That better be equal to when I divide it by subtracting the x values, x minus 2. So how do you solve for this? Well, this looks like I'm going to cross multiply and use a distributive property. This is 3x minus 6 equals, what number is this? This number is um, um, 15 minus 6 is 9. So I bring the 6 on the other side. That is going to be uh, 15. x equals 5. So that's the missing value of x in there. x equals 5. And if x was 5, they would have a slope of Three. So that's kind of working backwards within the slope formula to find a particular part of the coordinate given the slope. Tough problem. Write the equation of the line that's parallel to this equation. Right away my brain goes, well, if they're parallel and their slope is negative 2, our slope better be negative 2. I just have to find our b value. Well, to find our b value, we just have to plug in this point. So the y is negative 6. The x value is 3, and so when I solve for b in here, that's negative 6 on the other side is a positive 6, b value is 0. No big deal, so my final answer is y equals negative 2x. You could put the plus 0, but you don't have to. Um, and that's how uh, we write the equation of that line. So whether it's with the 0 or without the 0, it doesn't matter. Uh, the next one is we're going to do the same thing, but instead of parallel, we're going to write a line that's perpendicular to this one. Well, what I notice, if I want them to be perpendicular and their slope is one-fifth, our slope better be the negative reciprocal, which is negative 5. So I got half my answer. This is negative 5x plus the b value. Well, what do I want to do with the b value? I want to plug it into x and y. So this is going to be 12 equals negative 5 times 1 plus b. So b here turns out to be 17. So the final answer, meaning what's the equation, is going to be negative 5x plus 17. That's the equation of the line that's perpendicular. And then we have another one here. Uh, which point is both 
an X and Y intercept. Well, how do you be an X and Y intercept at the same time? Well, there's only one point right there. You could put 0, 0 or the origin, something like that. That's supposed to be an easy one. And then the last one is, you've got to graph this equation, y equals x. Well, y equals x is actually in slope-intercept form. Let me just write this another way. So this is like y equals 1x plus 0. That means the same exact thing. But notice when I write it like this, it's a little clearer to see what the slope is and what the b value is. Therefore, when I go to graph this line, I'm going to start at the b value, which is 0, right there. Notice that's the origin. And then the slope is up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, or down 1 backwards 1. And if I connect all those points in here, this is a very famous line in mathematics um, in lots of other courses. Uh, the equation on the dot line is y equals x. Basically, this is saying, look, whatever y is, x is going to be the same. So if x is 2, y is 2. If x is 3, y is 3. If x is 4, y is 4. If x is negative 2, then y is going to be negative 2. All right, so hopefully that helped. And... Um,